Hi, uh, my name is Shady Atia, professor at Liège University, and today I'm going to talk about the study variables and operationalization. Well, this presentation is part of a playlist on master's thesis and PhD dissertation, and the audience of this presentation are scientists who are writing a master's thesis, a dissertation, or a research article. Well, the goal of this presentation is to provide a step-by-step -step guidance on how to define your research variables, especially when you have a research with research questions and you need to have a translation of these uh, concepts of your research into variables that you can measure. And also it's related to how to link them to your research question and to do an operational exercise. And operationalization is simply a transition from theory to empirical research. The content of the presentation, a short introduction on what is operationalization and how to define your variables of your study, how to operationalize, how to narrow down your question, and finally some takeaway message. So let's start with the introduction. What is operationalization? Well, operationalization of research design means to define the variables and concepts that can be measured or expressed quantitatively or qualitatively in your research. And it is a very crucial step during your proposal development when you are working on your proposal to work, uh, develop your research in a master's thesis or a PhD to move from a simple study conceptual design into a technical design of your research. So simply translate the simple ideas into technical measurable uh, variables in order to be able later on to start your observations or your experimental work. Now, when we look at different studies, why is it so important to do the operationalization and variables uh, definition step? Actually, operationalization is part of every research process, and it is the transition from theory to empirical research, like I told before. And as, as you can see in this uh, graph here, you start with a scholarship, a topic that you're interested, you define a problem, and from there you go with your questions, you have a hypothesis, or some research questions, and then you do your design, your research design, you define your methodology, what are you going to do, what are you going to collect, and then you go do the operational plan, exactly what are you going to measure, and then you start, after operationalization, directly the field work. So it's a step before conducting experimental or observational field work, and also you can use it if you are conducting literature reviews or qualitative research. So it's a very important step, and later on when you start the, the observation, you can do the data analysis, conclusion, and documentation. Another graph, very interesting one by uh, Trochim, uh, it's explaining operationalization as the follow. You begin with a broad question, then you narrow it down to focus on specific parameters, and then you do operationalization. This is a very important step, and from there, you can start your field work, whether it's observation, experimentation, modeling, or even uh, a qualitative uh, method of uh, collecting data. And then you analyze the data, you have your conclusion, and then you can go back and generalize regarding the question of your research. So simply, it's important because it helps you to translate your concepts of your research when you do a literature review to operational measurable variables. Actually, the operationalization is a translation of concepts into variables and indicators and protocols that you will use in order to start your data collection. So it's a very important step and it's a very technical step. And as I told you, it allows you to go from a conceptual uh, uh, stage of designing your, your research into a technical stage. Now, what is the most important and the first step I should do when I start my operational work? I need first to define my variables and relations between these variables for my, con for my uh, study that I will conduct. So as you can see in this scheme, this is the follow-up scheme between the step when you define a research problem and before you start your field work. What are the two major steps? The first step, this first stage we call it the variable definition stage and the second stage we call it the operationalization stage. The first stage involves that you define your problem statement your research should start with a problem, you have an aim and a goal, you define the objectives, you have some research questions that are specified or described in a general way, and then you conduct a literature review. You must review the field where you want to conduct your study. You must do the literature review during your proposal development to make sure what has been written before by others regarding your field and your uh, work domain. And then you can come up 
and define the main concepts and the main variables that you found in the literature regarding your research question and regarding your problem and you start to define the relations between the variables and you draw a relation framework so this is the first step you should do when you are developing your proposal and you are trying to operationalize your research and come up with more specific research question once you are done with defining the main concepts and the main variables that you are interested to study in your research and what are the relations or the potential relations between these variables you can move now to operationalization operationalization will help you to start now to define for every concept a specific variable and a specific sub variable and finally an indicator that can be empirically measurable and then you can narrow down your research question and finally you can start your field work and your data collection so this is briefly the overview on how to move from a conceptual research design to a technical research design now when we look at uh, the first part of the operation of the uh, variable definition problem statement research aim and goals you should ask yourself the following do i have a well-defined research problem do i have uh, uh, described did i describe a knowledge gap in the area that I want to do my investigation? Is there a central research question that I defined? And this central research question is often contextualized for a specific zone. Um, probably you can talk geographically, uh, for example, or a specific uh, domain. So it has to be contextualized and you must define a general research question that has an open scope uh, and you can use terms like to what extent or, or uh, um, uh, use only open-ended questions. So this is a very important step before defining your variables. So a quality check when any student pass his or her proposal, I start to ask them, what are your research questions? Do you start your research questions with the term, to what extent? Are your research questions open-ended? Never use questions that are ending with yes or no. And from there, I can start to build up with them, defining the next step which is defining variables so the first step statement of problem research aim and goals and broad research question there is a video if you want to learn more about how to do that on writing research proposals and literature review i advise you to have a look because the next step now after doing those first uh, three steps is to start your literature review during your proposal development you must make a short literature review for sure you will do an extended literature review during your study, but the preliminary literature review is very important to help you to define the variables of your study and redefine your research question. So it's very important to review literature, define what are the concepts that you found regarding the domain that you want to study, and from there you can move to highlight or articulate or identify the main concept and the associated variables and try to draw a relations uh, framework or a relation network between those variables so this is the first step to do now doing a literature review is related to your research uh, topic is important because it provides better uh, knowledge of the research topic from your side it provides a better understanding of the research question and make it more specific or if you are using a hypothesis and the main parts of the literature review should be comprising general overview of the subject of the research and what the literature has said about each existing variable and concept and theory of your uh, hypothesis of, of your research question and finally you must have uh, indicators for each variable found in the literature so let's say you are talking about a concept about um, let's say obesity you must see what are the concepts related to obesity is the relation what are the relationships between obesity what are the factors that influence obesity you define them you draw a network and you start to ask yourself do i have an overview do i understand this phen phenomena of obesity did i define all the concepts that relate to this phenomena did i manage to find indicators to measure uh, these uh, different uh, concepts in an empirical way and then finally you must have indicators for that so this is an example on how to think when you do the literature review once you are done with your literature review now you are eligible to take the findings of your literature review and to de define more specifically the main concept and the main variables of your study well literature review is simply an existing extensive review of the state of the art related to your topic 
and what are you should ask yourself what are the main concept definition and theory used in my problem and what are the main methodologies and technique relevant relevant to your research topic this is also very important you must define uh, methodologies that are used in relevance or in relation to the variables that you want to study so that you see how did others measure these variables in their studies once you are done with this stage you can move to the second stage which is the relations framework so you start to say okay what is a relations uh, framework it's a structure that uh, connects the main concept and variables of the study based on an extensive literature review and you ask yourself what are the relationships between the concepts and the, defi the definitions that i found let's say if i am talking again about uh, obesity what are the factors that are associated with this um, um, variable or this concept uh, is it food is it lifestyle is it uh, income is it uh, social uh, uh, condition and so on access to food and so on and i start to create a relationship and the most important are that i start to define what are the independent variables and what are the dependent variables in this uh, relations network so simply i draw a scheme or a, a network for my topic and the concept that i'm interested in and in relation to other concept trying to say who is influencing whom? So is there an influence? Okay, obesity, this is the central concept. It's influenced by what? I start to gather and group the other concepts. And I start to see the correlation, try, try to make it in a very schematic way, this concept. And if somebody asks me what's an independent variable and what's an independent variable, simply an independent variable is the researcher, the, the element that the researcher has control over them. So uh, they are intentionally uh, changed to see the effect on the dependent variable. So, for example, if we are investigating uh, uh, obesity in mice, um, the uh, uh, independent variable can be the food, for example, or the sugar uh, uh, uptake that we will feed to the mice, for example. And then the dependent variable are what measures or what changes will respond. In this sense, it can be the weight of the rat for example, or the longevity, uh, life longevity of the rat. So my uh, dependent uh, variable in this sense is food and my dependent variable is weight in kilograms. So this is the way how to translate my interest in obesity, for example, uh, in mice communities or in human beings even. And I translate this interest into measurable concept with independent and dependent variables and as you can see i must have always a cause effect relation when you want to do operationalization and you want to define the variables of your study after doing your literature review you must keep into account always that you look with an open eye what could be a cause effect relation between the concepts and these variables that i'm looking to study in the future and let me give you an example to make it much more concrete I had a master's thesis last year working with me on the effects of transparent adaptive facades on energy and comfort performance in building. So she started first doing a literature review and she reviewed everything related to adaptive facades. But adaptive facades are simply building skins or envelopes that can adapt to climate, like windows that can open or glazing that can get colored and so on, or shading devices can be movable and so on. So she did a literature review on everything related to adaptive facade technologies. So she defined a pool of concept of adaptive facades. Later on, when she went into more detail to operationalize her literature review, she said, I want to study the relation between the control strategies, how to define some control strategy, when to turn on this system on, when to turn them off, uh, when to give them the command, command to operate them, in relation to energy consumption, thermal comfort and visual comfort. So she wants to see what happened if we open, let's say, the shading devices, uh, we turn them off from nine o'clock to five o'clock. What will happen in a space regarding energy consumption, thermal comfort and visual comfort? And in this sense, she succeeded first after doing the literature review to reduce the scope of variables that she wants, she wants to study, she defined only four technologies, electrochromic glazing, uh, dynamic shading, double skin facades, and double skin ventilated facades. So she narrowed the concept into only four. And then she started to say that my independent variable will be different control strategies. I will try to vary this control strategy. For example, turning on the shading system from nine to five, 
or turning it on only in the night from uh, five o'clock to six o'clock in the morning. So she starts to vary this independent variable and every time she vary this cause or this independent variable, she measures the effect, which is the dependent variable. In this sense, it will be energy, thermal comfort and visual comfort. And yes, you can have different dependent variables when you do your studies. You don't need to have only one dependent variables. But for the sake of simplicity, start always to focus on one major independent uh, uh, variable and then check at least two or three uh, dependent variables and make sure that in your research when you start your field work these concepts uh, or these variables can be measurable so you must make sure that there is an indicator associated with each of those uh, variables and this indicator can be empirically measured so for example if we are talking about energy this is a variable what can be uh, 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 indicator for energy it can be kilowatt hour per square meter per year uh, what is the indicator of thermal comfort it can be how much hours you are uh, in the comfort zone or outside the discomfort hours uh, another indicator for visual comfort can be uh, their, their um, daylight uh, glare probability or a spatial uh, daylight, daylight autonomy or solar exposure and so on so you will find for every variable different instrument and actually operationalization and design defi the variables definition is the process of conducting a literature review based on solid research question and problem statement and going to after reading translating these concepts into concrete variables that are independent and dependent with a cause effect correlation so that when you go start your execution of your research observation or experimentation or uh, field work in general you know exactly what are you going to measure what will be the control uh, strategy what is the parameter you change and what is the parameter you measure as a consequence of this change so it's very important to uh, operationalize your work and understand how is this done so let me repeat you need to define a domain and concept when you start uh, defining your variables you have to finish your literature review once you are done you have to define the domain and concepts that you found in the literature review. The literature review can help you to define the concept. You can also conduct expert interviews with expert to define the concept. If you are not having time, you can also ask an uh, expert to help you with that. And for sure, this step of defining your domain and concept of the study, it can help you to find the indicators of each concept to prepare your relations network. And relation frameworks simply uh, are a transition translation in form of graphics of the key elements of the research study as the uh, key concept and theories. As you can see, this is a relation framework. I can say, okay, these are the overall concept. She made a selective choice uh, choice of the concept. She defined defined an independent variable and three dependent variables with different parameters. So this is very important in the first step to do in defining your variables in relation to the literature review. Let's now move to a more technical part and this is almost reaching to the end, the operationalization. Now, if we are done with all these elements, we can now move to the operationalization to narrow down our question and finally start our field work and our data collection. So simply when we look at here, what is operationalization? I have defined my variables. I determined what are the variables that I want to measure based on the concepts and I have determined how I can measure them. And that's a big weakness in many researchers uh, uh, development when I look at the research proposal they are, might be very interested on defining what they will measure and how they define a variable that it has a indicator that is measurable but they don't say how can I measure it and in the frame of time and in the frame of available resources of your lab that you are working at you must make sure what are the available instrument what are the protocols that they are using so that when you propose a variable to be measured you must make sure that this equipment will be available during your field work so a very important step once you determined your variable and you determined how you will measure it you can start to narrow the scope and choose only the variables of your study and make sure that you lit use very little number of variables to make your study very specific and very unique choose what variables will be used in your experiment and choose the way the variables will be measured and this is a step after defining you must choose 
So like I told you in the study before, there was a lot of uh, uh, adaptive facade uh, technology. There was uh, solar reflecting uh, coating, smart office uh, facades, electrochromics, dynamics, smart controls, and so on and so on. But the, the researcher decided only to study four technologies and focus on one independent variable and three dependent variables. So this is very important to take into account. Now moving from operationalization, you must define three things when you do operationalization. If you are writing a review or if you are sorry, writing your proposal, I will ask you, what are your variables you want to study? What are the sub variables and what are the indicators? Variables are simply the researcher has, to con has control over them. They are intentionally changed to see the effect on the dependent variable. So these are what we mean by variables. Sub-variables, they are what is measured or what change in response to the independent variable. So you can start to make a table. This is the variables, what I will going to um, change, cause, and then here are the sub-variables, here are the effects. And then finally, I'm making the table the third element indicators. They are what is measured or what change in response to the independent variable, but in a quantifiable way. So I have a measure, a unit uh, to measure it. So actually, indicators are just a translation of variables in a measurable way, and sub variables represent the um, uh, measure or what will be the response. Actually, this is the effect and this is the cause. So always write your variables cause effect relation. Now, how uh, I give you an example, how to measure, for example, heat transfer in a building envelope in an accurate way. So actually, I want to do a study or a master's thesis or a PhD to measure how can I measure heat transfer in a building envelope or in a wall using accurate approaches. So actually, what will be the dependent and independent variable? Actually, is, if you look at the study simply, I will come up with different measurement techniques and every time I will measure the accuracy and the speed of each technique. By varying the different measurement techniques, I will have an effect of more fast and more accurate results. And based on that, I can compare different techniques. So this is simply the way how to do it. Now, let me go into detail. What is my main variable? I am measuring the heat transfer. What is the sub variable? Is the wall type? And what will be the indicator? Thermal property and measurement time and accuracy. So simply, if I will make a table, simply I will have different wall typologies, and I will have different properties, and I have time and accuracy, something that I don't know. What is the cause? What is the effect? Well, the cause is having different typologies and different uh, technologies of measurement, and the effect is time and accuracy. So the measurement protocol that I will use, for example, I will look at ISO 9869. It's an in-situ uh, measurement protocol. I will base my work based on that. My de dependent variable are different measurement techniques. So I will use, uh, let's say, a flux meter, and then I will use a thermocouple, um, for example. Those are different dependent variables. And then finally, I will measure the independent variable will be uh, how much time it took to get a measurement and how accurate was the measurement. So this is the cause-effect relation. My dependent variable in this case is the different measurement uh, sets. Uh, like I told you, sometimes it was a thermocouple, sometimes it was heat flux meter, sometimes from a, a heat flux meter and a thermocouple. Um, sometimes I will put a heat flux meter inside the wall and outside the wall. Sometimes I will put uh, a thermocouple only inside, sometimes inside and outside. So I will start to vary my dependent variable, which is how to have a different settings and different uh, 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 tools to measure. And then I see what will be the cause. How fast are the measurement and how accurate are they are. And based on that, I answered the research question, which is how to measure heat transfer quickly and accurately in a very specific way, in an experimental way. I have to buy the equipment, prepare the setting, look for the different wall composition, get by the ISO standard to see how I will measure. And many researchers, they are very ignorant when I ask them, how are you going to measure? They say, I don't know. So if you cannot measure it, most probably don't start doing this work. You must be sure 100%. 
And we always say, if you cannot measure it, you cannot manage it. So it's always recommended to make sure that whatever variables you are chasing or, or you are interested to study, make sure that they can be measurable and people before you already de developed techniques and methods to measure them. Especially when you are doing a master thesis. A master thesis, you do it in a very short time. You don't have time. You are not going to invent the wheel. Maybe if you are a, doing a PhD, in this case, you can come up and develop your own measurement protocol. But if not, stick to what's existing. Define the dependent variable, the independent variable, a measurement protocol, and proceed. So, measurement protocols are very important. They help you to create a study design or research methodology. And researchers should seek to comply with normative standards and protocols. Always use these standards because they help you to use the same definition language, procedures, indicators, and metrics. And they help you to comply with standardized methods uh, when it comes to the measurement based on community recognized protocol. So again, whatever variables in your operationalization step you are seeking to measure, try to make sure that there is a methodology that already exists describing how to measure it and that you have access to the equipment that allow you to do the measurement. And therefore, we always try to encourage scientists and researchers, especially early career ones and master students, to focus on the ISO standards, the CEN or the European Community Standards, or whatever. It can be ASTMs in the United States or in any other country in Japan or in India or in, in, in the United Kingdom, whatever. Just adhere to the existing standards and uh, connect your research to these standards so that you are more professional and you go faster and finding results that are more significant. Now operationalization before I end up the presentation is a step of research design that cannot be missed. It allows you to find procedure to measure and manipulate variables and it is a transition or it's a translation of abstract concepts into concrete variables that are measurable in an empirical way. Operationalization is a transition, uh, translation work, uh, like I told you, and the concept must be ca captured as much as direct way as possible. Don't try to figure out or fetch concepts that are difficult to measure. If you cannot measure it, then you cannot uh, uh, manage it. So always make sure that your variables, when you define them, they can be operationalized. And that's my question always to the students. Okay, you are interested in this concept you are defining these variables. Are these variables able to be operationalized? What's the meaning of operationalized? Meaning that they can be measured empirically with a specific indicator and with a specific method. If it cannot be operationalized, then your research is not empirical. So operationalization uh, is not easy. Sometimes it's difficult and some concepts we cannot operationalize. And therefore, I always advise my uh, researchers to avoid these uh, uh, variables that cannot be operationalized otherwise we will be measuring the perception we do more qualitative research which is difficult to uh, objectify and avoid the biases in it and the more the concept is abstract the more chances uh, there are only uh, uh, there are two only measure uh, a part of it so the more it's abstract it's more difficult um, this should be kept in mind when using data to draw conclusion on the entire entirety uh, of the concept. So it's a very important uh, idea here to look at uh, that your concept is not vague, it's not too abstract, otherwise you cannot uh, operationalize it. Let me give you an example. There are multiple ways of doing operationalization of a very simple abstract concept. Let's say I want to ask you how can we measure the love of animals? You have pets and you love them. How can we measure that? Operationalization number one can be the following we can count the number of interactions between the participant and the pet, touching and cuddling and so on. This can be an option. We can also be giving a survey to the participant and ask them to fill it up on their perception, on their uh, emotions and compassion to the animal and so on. So these are examples how I can operationalize. And there is no problem at all to use observational methods or uh, experimental methods in the form uh, experimental is just empirical by measurement or observational by doing uh, surveys to get um, self-reported uh, emotions or, or, or uh, comments or ideas of the users or the participants. And here I must always focus on cause-effect relation. So this is an example how I can operationalize 
a simple research question like that and make it very technical, very specific. And then I have to, if I go for option two for a survey, I must to build up the survey. If I go for counting, then it's empirical. I will start to do a counter or look for a tracer for the animal. I have to check what was done before and I have to define the method and so on. So now I'm done with my operationalization. I am now able to narrow down my research question. Why is this important? Because as I told you, my first research question that I posed in the definition of variable stage were general questions that they are talking about to what extent, how far, how can we, these are very general general and generous questions. Now, after doing the operationalization, I have to revise my proposal research question and rewrite them because now I'm going to do something very specific. I'm going only, for example, to focus on how much uh, uh, the cat we have, we, how much owners love their cats through the uh, interaction between the cat and the animal. Very specific question. Um, the first question was very general. Now I need to narrow it down. So this step is very important when I'm done with uh, operationalization. I must revisit my research question and make sure that is narrowed down. And let me talk more about narrowing down. Actually, I'm narrowing the scope of the research question. I'm still in the same domain. I'm not changing the research question, but I am making it more specific. And in this sense, operationalization should lead to this narrowing of the scope of your research question. And when the concepts are translated into variables and sub-variables and indicators that can be measurable, the research question can be more specific. That's all what we are looking at in, after doing the operationalization. Now, I want to come back to the final uh, work. Actually, when you start your field work, you have always in your mind a cause Relay, uh, effect uh, um, relation. We are not sure if we will do the measurement that we will find this correlation or not. But to start the operationalization work, the next step to be heads up ready for it, you need to look at what will be after I do my field work. After finding several ways of operationalizing the concept into variables, the data collection should start. Now I'm ready to start the data collection and I'm very conscious and I'm very um, looking at the chance that will be a correlation or not. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. So with the criteria in mind, try always to look based on the measurement. Is there a correlation? Is there a cause effect or not? And always examine the validity of the answers. So the hypothesis can predict a correlation that must be tested after data collection. So you can design your the research based on that. And the chosen, chosen variables must be tested for correlation that might lead to regression. Unfortunately, we cannot confirm that because we do not know. So the whole homework you have to do working on your proposal, define your variables based on the concept and literature review, operationalize them, prepare your setting of measurements and go to the field and start your measurements. When you come back, you start to do statistical treatment and from there you can check if there was really a cause effect relation or not. Now, the validity also of your work is very important. You have to look at the internal validity of your questions. Uh, is, the, is the answers free of bias? If you are using an experimental way, then most probably make sure that your equipment are clean. You can uh, repeat the test or you can repeat the measurement to make sure that the results are correct. If you are using an observational uh, technique, then you have to make sure that your questions are free of bias, you have external validity by having the answer valid for other cases to be able to generalize and this question needs to be kept into a mind even though today's presentation is not much about correlation and validity but I'm just giving you heads up when I am done with operationalization and I start my field work what will be next? The next will be trying to find a correlation and a cause effect uh, positively uh, proved and definitely trying to look for a regression um, uh, model and looking at the validity of the answers if I am doing observational work. If I am doing experimental work, also I have to address validity but in another way, making sure that my uh, measurement equipment are valid calibrated, I can repeat the test, the, I investigated all the conditions, I neutralized all the factors uh, around my experiment and this is crucial when we are addressing validity. Let me give you an example. We want to have a measuring the reaction of the brain in uh, magnetic resonance imaging when the participant is watching pictures of pets. So this is the same research question I asked you, how to measure the love 
to animals. Here we are doing it not observational. We are not asking people for their uh, opinions through uh, self-reported surveys. We are doing it empirical. Actually, we have an MRI scanner and it is measuring the wave and the interaction in the brain. So simply, how can we increase the validity? Increasing the internal validity by measuring more accurate than with a survey. So here your internal validity is very high because you're doing empirical measurements and you can decrease uh, the external validity because the participant know they are taking part of an experiment. So the objects who are participating, they are becoming part of it. So maybe they have overreactions when they saw the picture because they know that they are an experiment. So also it's very difficult to have an experimental setting that is ra like real life experimental setting. So any method, whether you go after your operationalization using an observational approach or experimental, you must make sure that will be risks and you must always answer which approach will have a higher internal validity, lower external validity, and so on to make sure that you have validated your research. Well, this is the end of the presentation. Some very fast takeaway message, uh, messages. I will not leave you long. Now, this presentation was, how, was about how to define your study variables and how to operationalize your research when you are developing your research proposal in order to be ready to do your field work, whether observational or experimental. And as you see, this is my favorite graph that I always use. I always say, start with broad questions, narrow down the focus, do the over operationalization exercise, and go observe, analyze the data, and come up with the research conclusion and generalize them if possible. Now, some takeaway messages regarding variables, something called independent variables, those are the control by the researcher. You must know what is an independent variable, and when I ask you in your research proposal, what is your independent variable, you must name it. Number two, dependent variable. Those are the measured by the researcher. So don't forget the cause effect. The cause is what you control, effect will be what will be measured as a consequence after you apply the cause. So always keep in mind what's independent and what is the dependent variable. Now after moving from variables, we move to operationalization. Define the concept that can be translated into measurable sub-variables and indicators. And simply this is the transition from theory to empirical research. If you don't do that, your research keeps being abstract, being um, um, theoretical, and you will be unable to technically chase these parameters and your scope of research will be very vague, very broad, and you will just come with ridiculous conclusions that are just talking about generalization without any specific thing. You must narrow down your research and operationalization will help you to do that. And it's a very painful process for researchers because it will force them to eliminate a lot of different variables because most young researchers, they want to do a cocktail effect measurement. They want to do multi-criteria, multi-concept, multi-variable measurements and reality and time limitation and professionalism force them to only select one or two or maximum three uh, dependent variables that they can measure. And that's the only way to go scientifically deeper and learn from the process. Later on, when you have time, if you have a career in scientific world, then you can do cocktail effects. But in a short time, master thesis, uh, it could be uh, very difficult. Establish protocols and methods to measure the three variables. Always, please, I invite you always to be aware how do they measure the variables of your domain or of your field. So you have a concept, it's translated into a variable, ask yourself, what is the indicator? What is the objective, empirical object indicator that they are measuring? What are the units of this indicator? And do they, how they do it in reality? And do I have the means and the time and the infrastructure to be able to do the same way of measurement or not? Are there existing standards, international standards or protocols or norms that are uh, technically defining how to do the measurement in a standardized way if this, there, go fetch them, read them, uh, seek them and make sure that you are understanding these measurement methods so that you up the game of your work and that you start from the beginning knowing exactly what are your variables, how you can measure them and you can in very short time do field work without wasting time and come up with uh, useful results. Also, redefine the research questions when you are done with operationalization. Very important to narrow the scope of your work. And finally, choose con correlated uh, variables uh, that can be having a potential, having a cause effect 
based on your observation or your experimentation. It's very difficult to define variables that do almost seem not having a correlation. If you think there might be a correlation, it's not sure, it can be a risky thing to have a negative correlation, go for it, but always seek the advice of your supervisors because they are able to guide you in this process. By that, I end up the presentation of today. Today's presentation is part of a playlist on how to prepare master thesis and PhD dissertation. I hope you understand more about how to define your design study variables and operationalization. Thank you very much for your attention and good luck with your work.